Okay, today I want to talk to you about consumer debt. And you all know what consumer debt is. Payday loans, credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, all those type of loans that we get to facilitate our lives. And yes, <clears throat> we do have to have a home to live in, but we don't have to go out and get outrageous when it comes down to buying a home uh, and credit cards. I personally think that credit cards are the worst debt that you can accumulate. And the reason for that is because the interest rates are so high on credit cards. Whether you have great credit or not, it's still going to be high interest rate in, in the tune of 17% on some of those cards and above. So be very, very careful when it comes down to accumulating a lot of consumer debt. As a matter of fact, I would say <clears throat> if you have to borrow money, that's something that you should you know, you know, pay very, very close attention to and decide whether or not it's necessary at the time that you're thinking of doing it, if you are considering building a business. Or even if you're not considering building a business, consumer debt is to me the mother of all evil when it really boils down to it, especially those credit cards. So if you can stay away from consumer debt, stay away from consumer debt, especially if you're considering building a business because the more consumer debt you accumulate, the harder it's going to be for you to build a business. I personally think that that's one of the killers of a business before you even get started if you have a lot of consumer debt. Because here's what happens. <clears throat> a person comes into a business idea, business opportunity, and then they start to look at what their bills are, how much money they have going out. And then they say to themselves, okay, well, I need my business to produce four or five thousand dollars a month in order for me to be able to live and maintain my lifestyle <clears throat> i need to be able to do that right away and when you really look at that yes there are some businesses out there some people out there in business that can generate income relatively quickly when it comes down to starting a business but that's a very very small fraction of people that are doing that most of us it takes time to build a business. We cannot get past that. You know, everybody is looking for the quick fix. And I am certainly as well. I would like to make money faster than slower. But the reality is, is that when you're starting a new business, nobody knows anything about you. Nobody knows anything about your business. So it takes time to build that business. Some people have this idea. If I open up a business, the people will come. And that's just not the case. We have to get people to come to our business. We have to get people to notice our business through hard work, dedication and commitment to that business over a longer period of time, not a short window, usually in most cases. Now, you know, yes, Internet businesses, freight brokerage businesses, those are businesses that you can build relatively quickly. But I've been building a freight broker business for the last four years now. And it didn't come quickly for me. So I can only talk about and speak about my experience. And also when you look around, you look out there, most people are not building freight brokerage businesses very quickly. Is it a great business model? Absolutely, no two ways about that. That is for certain. But at the same time, it is going to take you time to establish your business, to understand your business, to learn your customers, and how they do business, understand what their problems are so that you can offer solutions to those problems and then provide a service that they can appreciate. It takes time to do that. And when you have a lot of consumer debt and you're trying to build a business, that's just a lot of pressure on you, unnecessary pressure that you put on yourself and your business to produce numbers so that it can take care of all of your expenses. And usually that's not how it works. You are going to need the time to be able to produce the numbers that you know you want to produce when you when you're talking producing three four five thousand consistently monthly <clears throat> it takes time to do that and then of course those as those numbers get bigger it takes even more time for you to produce bigger numbers so get out of debt don't start putting yourself in a whole lot of debt you know people have this idea that you know if i'm a business owner i need to have you know, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 square foot home with, 
you know, a, a Mercedes and a, a Corvette sitting in the driveway. And those are just bills that are going to cause you problems when it comes down to building a business. How do I know? Because I've had them. <laughs> no two ways about it. I, I've had those bills. And I can tell you that if I didn't have those things, and you know, when it comes down to starting a business, that's like a lot of pressure off of you. You know, I, co I commonly refer to it as, you know, debt is like a elephant sitting on your chest. And as you start to get out of debt, that pressure is starting to release. You know, that elephant is starting to get up off of your chest and now you can breathe freely. And I tell you, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a, a way that you're breathing now that you're going to very much enjoy as you move down the road. Uh, but definitely get yourself out of debt. Getting out of debt is going to be one of the greatest things that you can do for your business. Uh, and not only just for your business, but for your overall lifestyle, because debt has a way of making us look better than we really look to the outside world. And I had that problem of buying things to impress people. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a car guy and I really, really like cars. You know, I've always liked cars since I was a little lad. I like cars. But the reality is, is that really what it is more so than anything else is a stroke of my ego. It makes you feel good, you know, to be able to ride around in a nice brand new Corvette or whatever car it is that you like makes you feel good. Um, but, the, but, you know, it's only going to be for a short period of time, you know, because those cars usually come with payments. Most of us are not going to go out and pay $70,000, you know, for a brand new Corvette or 80000 or whatever it is. Now, we make payments on that. And when you're making payments on that type of car and you can factor in the insurance and the maintenance that goes with that, you got a huge bill on your hand. And that's taken away from money that you can use to build your business. The whole idea here is to build a business, not to seem like we're something that we're not. I understand that. I understand that very well um, because for a long time, I bought things that I didn't need. You know, I bought houses and cars and clothes and all of the things that, you know, makes it seem as if you're doing much better than you are. But reality says something a whole lot different than that. So don't get yourself caught in that, in that trap. Don't get caught in that rat race, as they call it, you know, because then you put more and more pressure on your business and you want the business to produce five, six thousand dollars a month so that it can pay for your bills. But what we have to first understand is that a business has to first to be able to take care of itself. You know, before it takes care of you, the business has to be able to take care of its own bills. You know, you're going to have bills that come with a freight brokerage, monthly bills, TMS, surety bonds, unless you pay for those yearly. And still, you're going to break those out over a 12 month period, even if you pay for them. Uh, for a year. For example, if you pay $1,200 for your surety bond a year, then if you look at it from a monthly standpoint, you're paying $100 a month for that surety bond. Your TMS is going to be a, a, a monthly charge that you're paying. Your low boards are going to be a monthly charge that you're paying. You're also going to have motor carry authority. That's a one-time charge, but you're going to have some bills that you accumulate and they are going to be bills that you have to pay monthly with your new business. So don't overwhelm yourself with consumer debt because if you have too much consumer debt, then your business can't survive because you have to have enough money to handle all of those things that you created on the consumer side. So let's get back to the basics. You know, let's get back to the basics. What I always talk about in a lot of our videos is we talk about downsizing or getting all the way out of debt. And when you start to do that, you're going to start to feel so much better. You're going to have so much money left at the end of the month. Right now, you know, with a lot of us, it's too much month left at the end of the money. You know, we got so much, you know, so many bills that we're paying that we can hardly get our heads above water. And then, bam, here that thing, here comes the first of the month again, and that process starts back over. And what you'll find yourself doing is chasing bills. You're just basically working to pay bills. And that's not how you intended it. That's not what you want when it really boils down to it. You want to be able to build wealth over time. And how you build wealth over time is having money 
to put back into your business, having money to invest in other ventures that allows for your money to grow. But if you want to continue to put your car dealerships, owners, children through school, then you continue to buy cars. You know, I know that's what I was doing for a very long period of time, buying cars. You know, every other year I would buy a new car, you know, because it made me feel good. It feels good real quick for a short period of time. It, you know, kind of feel good about, oh man, I got a brand new car. But it only takes a few weeks and you're back to where you started. And not only now that you are back to where you started, you have a six or seven or $800 car note that you have to pay. You got a hundred, hundred and fifty dollar insurance that you have to pay. And then you have to put 93 octane in that in that new Corvette that you buy or that new sports car that you buy. So I would say get all the way out of debt, completely eliminate your credit card debt. And that is going to give you a better foundation to build your business on. It's going to be, you know, a much um, easier task for you to build a business without all of that extra consumer debt that we carry and expect our business to be able to, you know, to be able to take care of and be able to handle uh, in order for you to uh, be able to live the lifestyle that you want to live. And when you really look at it, that lifestyle of being able to have a big car and a big house is, in most cases, just to impress other people. Uh, because when I started out looking for a house, I think I was about 31 years old when I purchased my first house. And, you know, the idea was when you buy a car and you buy a big house, you've made it. Now, the truth is you haven't made it <laughs> because that's not your house, you know, unless you pay for cash money. That's not your house. And how they'll prove that it's not your house is if all you have to do is miss a couple of payments and they'll wrap that tape around your house and you'll realize that you're just a glorified renter. You're not a homeowner. That's a that's a you know, that's a phrase that they use to give us, you know, this wonderful feeling, I guess, to make us feel different than somebody who's renting. But when it really boils down to it, you are a glorified renter when you're buying a home. So if you go out and buy a three hundred or four hundred or five hundred or six hundred thousand dollar home, you're just making payments. And if you miss one or two of those payments, then you'll see that you're just a renter. That's all it is. And even when you paid for that house, you still have property taxes that you have to pay. And those property taxes are for the life of that home. So let's not get it twisted. Let's keep things in perspective. Let's live within our means and stop living outside of our means. And I'm not pointing at you on that. I'm talking to me as well, because I have done things, stupid things with money that puts us in a, you know, a much worse situation when it comes down to it. And then when it comes down to building that business that you want to build, being the business owner that you know that you can be, it is going to put a whole lot more pressure on you. It's going to put unnecessary pressure on you to make more and more money. And then your business becomes about making money. But the reality is your business has to be based around the service that you provide, especially when we're talking about a freight broker's business. And when you can provide a great service and you can consistently provide a great service, the money will come. But if we put money up front and make it about money, then most times our businesses are going to fail, you know, because it cannot just be about money. Um, because what you're going to see, specifically in a freight broker business, because that's the type of business we're talking about. That's the one we're in. We're talking about any business, but specifically a freight broker business, since that's what we do. Those type of businesses take time for you to start getting the income coming like you wanted to come in. Now, yes, you're going to eventually, if you stick with it, if you make the sacrifices and dedicate yourself to your business, the money is going to eventually start to come. But if it once the money starts to come and then all of it is going out on bills, then you're not building wealth. You're just living to pay bills. We want to be able to build wealth. And then once we get a point to a point where we got a sustained income coming in, you know, we want to start to create multiple streams of income and the more <clears throat> or the less debt you have, the better chance you're going to have at doing that. Yes, that's what we want to do eventually is create multiple streams, but we want to establish ourselves and, you know, start to create one solid stream first before we move on to try and create multiple streams. And the less debt that you have, the better chance that you're going to have at doing that. I want to introduce you to someone that 
uncle of mine introduced me to, and that's a guy named Dave Ramsey. And that's who I follow. Uh, you know, I follow his program, his plan about getting out of debt, starting with baby steps. You know, taking those baby steps to get yourself all the way out of debt, starting to clear up, clear up your credit card debt, your mortgage loans, your auto loans, you know, clear up all of that debt. And I'm not saying that you have to clear up that debt before you start your business, but you definitely want to downsize it because again, the less money you have going out on bills, the more money that you can focus in on building your business. You know, people say you don't need money to start a business and you don't necessarily need money, but let's not get it twisted. When we have money, we have a cushion. We have that resource that's there that we can tap when it's time, you know, to to add something on to our business, you know, and the more money that we have, the better off that we are when it comes down to building a business. Now, again, I don't mean just pouring money into a business and that makes you, you know, you know, or makes your business better because you can have a lot of money and still have a you know crazy business model and not do very well at all. You have to manage your finances, be able to manage your finances well enough so that you can grow your business. And again, I don't mean just pouring money into a business. That's not what I'm saying at all. Pouring money into a business will you know, get you to broke faster than if you didn't have money sometimes because we can spend money on the wrong things. We want to be very good money managers. We want to be conscious of our dollars. We want to count what's going into our business and what's going out of our business. And when we can see places to, to cut some things that we don't need, we definitely need to cut the fat. You'll see that in businesses throughout history. Whenever you see people coming in, for example, I was a contractor. And when you go into a sustainment mode in contracting, what happens is you have people that start to come in and start asking you questions. What do you do? And what they're doing is finding out whether you're needed or not because it's time to cut the fat. Sustainment mode means that, you know, the war is not, there's no longer going on. And now they're starting to cut back things that they don't need. Well, businesses always do that. And you have to do that as a business owner, an effective business owner. You want to always look to cut back things that you don't need because that gives you extra cash, extra money to put back into other things in your business or to put back into investments that help grow your overall wealth. So what we wanted to talk to you and stress to you today is, is to manage your finances, get out of debt, particularly get out of credit card debt because of the high interest rates on those credit cards. And when you look at your credit cards, you'll see sometimes that, you know, if you are carrying a balance on a credit card, you're paying super interest on those credit cards. You can be paying $300 a month on that credit card and paying $250 out in interest every month and only $50 is going toward the principal. So it'll take a very long time, depending on how much credit you've extended uh, or has been extended to you, you'll be able to take you a very long time to, to erase that debt. So keep that in mind. Get out of credit card debt. Get out of all of your consumer debt. And then once you're out of the credit card debt, you know, the auto loans and things such as that, then you can focus in on your mortgage and start to pay, out, pay that off as well. Some people never look at a mortgage as something that you should pay off, but it's definitely something that you should pay off because when you look at the interest that you're paying out, and we often don't look at the amount of interest that we pay out every single month on credit that has been extended to us. That's a huge bill that we have when we look at it, especially if you have a house on a 30 year mortgage, when you look at the amount of money you're paying toward interest every month, you'll start to see that very little or very or nothing at all is going toward your principal amount. So that's why it takes you such a long period of time to pay it off. But when we get in gazelle mode, where we, that Dave Ramsey talks about, get gazelle intense, and we start to run after paying those bills and paying those bills off as fast as we can, what we'll find is that we have a huge amount of money at the end of the day that we can start to invest in our business, invest in other investments that we want to help grow our overall wealth. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Get out of debt, build a business that you want to build, and you'll find that without that debt, it's going to be a much easier task 
to build that business. So we're not into seeming to be. We want to actually be that great business owner. You know, a lot of people look at it, you know, look at this thing as, you know, I want to seem as if I'm doing very well. Nah, it's much better to be doing very well than seeming to be. How do I know? Because I've done it. You know, I've been that person to overextend myself because it made me feel good for a short period of time. And I'm doing the best that I can to help you avoid that same trap. So with that said, see you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.